I'm Alice Kalikian. Uh, I chair the program in film at Brandeis, and I'm also a member of the history department. And I'd like to thank the history department for sponsoring this event with film, television, and interactive media. Um, I've been hearing about this film for about six months now. Um, Errol Morris, who will be joining us later on, um, would talk about it at breakfast. And I had the privilege of seeing it at Telluride and absolutely loved it. And I met the talented director, Vanessa. And so on behalf of the E.D. Lou Wasserman Fund, the history department, and the film program, I'd like to welcome Vanessa to say a few words. And after the screening, there'll be a Q&A with Errol and her. One of the reasons that I wanted to be here tonight is because <coughs> I like this film. Maybe liking a film about Heinrich Himmler is not the right way to express my interest in it. But yes, it's a film that I like, and it's a film even more to the point that really interests me and has engaged me on all kinds of levels. We just had uh, Alice, both of us, had a discussion about this film while we were sitting outside waiting to come in here. And I will let her talk, so forgive me if I just say a couple of things. Um, one of the things that I said is that I felt that we were kindred spirits. Because one of the things that really fascinates me is making movies from the inside out. It's very, very easy to make a film about um, how bad a man Heinrich Himmler was. We don't think it's really <laughs> ultimately that controversial. Um, one of the worst human beings in history. Um, what is really interesting is to make a movie that isn't from the outside in, but in reverse. Um, that question which really endlessly fascinates me is how did I or if you want any monster in history, how do they see themselves? How do they envision uh, their role in history, who they were, why they did what they did? Um, and this movie in many ways perfectly captures that idea and is immensely important for that reason alone. And for that, I thank you. I think you've uh, created uh, an, an extraordinarily interesting and important film. Thank you. Can you uh, speak a little bit about how you collected the um, materials for the movie? The first thing that we did was to, to write the script, so to, to transcribe the content of the collection into modern German and then to translate it into English and Hebrew. Um, the, what, what we knew was only the, the newsreels of this period. At a certain point, it seemed to me it, it just didn't fit to show newsreels with the text because it was not supporting the text, neither contradicting the text. This is when I realized that the newsreels are pure propaganda material and that they may be, they, they should be something reflecting the insight of what the text is saying. So we started the research um, with um, a team of um, German researchers and we got access to home videos of families coming from the same socio-economical um, level of Heinrich Himmler. We went to the places that Heinrich Himmler went from the day he was born until he committed suicide. And we started to discover this whole world that is reflecting the insight of the life of Heinrich Himmler. And it took four years.
I sometimes tell my wife one complaint that she can't make about me. It's one of my favorite complaints in the movie. Um, Himmler's wife complaining that Heinrich Himmler loves Hitler more than he loves her. Um, I love my wife and I don't really love Adolf Hitler. <laughs> N not a problem. But the insanity of it all um, is really quite amazing to listen to. So um, you mentioned before that um, you just came back from uh, Germany, Berlin. I just wonder if you can share with us some of the reaction um, that the audience had after they saw the movie. The reactions in Germany are very, are very emotional and very difficult. And it comes back to, you know, to, to what Errol is saying is that it's the inside. They, they see themselves, you know, we may all see ourselves in the, in the human being that was Heinrich Himmler. Um, not in the choices he made, but in, in the fact that he's a human being um, who did evil choices and who is monstrous um, beyond description. But um, for Germans, it's too close. The in is too close to them because they recognize the, themselves too much in, in the in. So they were, they are very angry. They say, my father was a soldier, he was a Nazi, but he was not Heinrich Himmler. I grew up like this, this is what I saw at home, this is what we were doing on Sunday afternoons, we were go, going for picnics to Dachau, but we didn't know what was happening on the other side of, of the, the concentration camp. So it's too close to them, they don't have the, the perspective to, to see it as as an intellectual challenge or as a reflection. So th the reactions in Germany are difficult. Hi. Um, I was, 20 years ago, I was part of a group uh, going from Israel to Berlin. And it was one of the only schools that uh, collaborated with a German high school. And we went through the whole trip of going to Dachau and, and Auschwitz and, and the Czech Republic. And I want to disagree with that point that you're saying because I felt that for them, the inn was very prominent um, on the trip and it was something that they dealt with constantly. And we had one young guy that was with us that his um, grandfather was an assistant to Hitler. And it was, it was very traumatic for him, but he dealt with it. And I feel that there's a lot of parallels between the Israeli society and the German society in dealing with the process. Because even Israel did not accept the refugees who were coming from the camps at the beginning. And um, I just wanted to comment that I think the movie is very provocative. I think it's, it's a movie that should be done and hopefully would be taken into schools, um, just even American schools, regular schools, where people can understand that you know we are all that kind of people and it's very easily to switch it to the other place. One of the reasons I love this movie, I've had arguments over the years uh, with close friends of mine about Eichmann in Jerusalem, about Hannah Arendt. Um, books keep coming out. Um, it's a cottage industry, uh, part created by Hannah Arendt. And that question of who was um, Adolf Eichmann, a banal civil servant who was just doing his duty, or some monster. Um, and this is why I love the movie. Um, my takeaway, for what it's worth, about Hannah Arendt and her book, she wrote in a a letter to Gershom Sholem. Gershom Sholem had been uh, critical of the book, critical of her. Um, that the banality of evil was not about the presence of something, it was about the absence of something. Something that you expected to be there 
that just wasn't. And to me, it's always meant that when you're confronted with some kind of unbelievable evil, you think that somehow in the personality there has to be something that accounts for it, that has to be as big as the evil it created. And maybe it's just not there. And that is a really, really frightening and disturbing thought. And it's at the heart of this movie. Um, is he the decent one? Yes, he, for himself he was the decent one. He wasn't hiding the cloven hoof. He saw himself as a decent, hard-working, productive, loyal Nazi. And that in itself is what makes this a frightening and important story. I think that the... the the frightening thing in, in what you said, Errol, about ordinary and is that if Himmler was an ordinary man, then we all shall seek to be extraordinary and then we have a big problem <laughs> as, as a society, as human beings. How did you decide uh, when to make the tone more empathetic and when... Uh, when it would be more of a lecture? When we wrote the script, we, we were um, accompanied by two psychiatrists and two historians. So we, we analyzed the, the emotional aspect of the correspondence of the letters. So we, we knew what, what the meaning of, um, of what Himmler his parents, his wife, are saying. So we try to, I as a director, I try to, to pass those emotions to the actors who read um, the collection, the, the correspondence and, and the letters. And because of the fact that in the film we don't have um, any narration and any guiding voice who's saying who is talking, it was very important to manage with the sound world to differ, differ, differentiate between the speeches and the letters. Just a few more words about the, the cinematic experience. From, from the beginning, we understood that the, the concept of this, the, there's a way that people uh, get used to see a documentary film. Vanessa spoke about it. You have like this music and a narrator that guide you through the story. And we knew that this film is not going to be like this. This film, uh, the material actually coming from 151 different sources from uh, 13 countries. And uh, uh, this archive material shot on many uh, uh, different uh, 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 cameras. It was a 60 millimeters, eight millimeters, eight and a half, and so many sources. And when we saw the material at the offline editing room, we understood that to make it happen, to make this experience, we must restore the picture. And it was very innocent, you know, we look, uh, we, are, uh, we are based in Tel Aviv, so uh, we, we search in Tel Aviv, a post-production facility that can do this restoration, and uh, we understood that nobody is doing it. And we brought export from overseas, the train 10 people and these 10 people, set for eight months, day and night, and restored the picture frame by frame. Restore the picture, I mean taking less scratches, dust, and uh, all the other time defects out of the picture. Um, so that was the, the process and the concept of the movie. Hi guys, uh, first of all, thank you very much. I think it's a very important uh, and powerful piece that you guys put together. I commend you for it. Um, my question is, on a personal level, how did you guys manage to disconnect or, you know, um, you talk the, the influence 
to portray the story the way that you think is you know neutral or gonna this is a very difficult task to per- portray this monster in a light that is not evident that he's you know just purely monster um, and what and what did that cause you you know the three of you to feel while you're putting this thing together to make sure that you're not just tempted to just show all of the monstrosity and evil you know even though there's a lot of it um, but also show the softer side and, and get that across. I think that the most, to answer your question, it's, it's very complex, but it was, to me, it was the, the, the guide and the strictness to be faithful to the text. This, the text that he wrote and his family wrote was what guided me and what every time I wanted to, I emotionally felt that I want to add something or to show something else. I, I was pulled back and very strict with, with myself and we all were after writing the script with the image and, and with the sound to, to remain, you know, to, to stick to Himmler. To, to stick to what is written, to what he wrote, and not to to get lost in the emotional reactions we, we all had. Vanessa, thank you so much. Thank for you. Coming. Thank to you. Our little cinematic. <laughs>